Good morning, this is Ken Wong from Tortoise Capital with a review of the weekend trading reports for February 15th, 2014. Pardon my uh, congestion, got a little bit of a head cold here. Uh, market is in bullish volatile conditions on an annual basis using weekly RSI 14. We're near the top end of neutral at 66 out of 100. Using the 10 day index for short term conditions, we're overbought at 97 out of 100. With the market mosaic, the percent stretch relative to the 200 day moving average is up to yellow bullish now at 7.81%, so a little over 5% cushion to sideways markets. The slope of the 50 day moving average has improved to 0.20%, white, uh, yellow neutral. <clears throat> the bearish uh, strength has, of the trend has reduced. Uh, ADX is now down to 23.6. Bulls are back in charge. ATR percentage has cooled off a bit to 1.15%, although it's still volatile. The risk index is the 30 period moving average of the VIX divided by the 10. It comes in at a score of 0.95. Anything less than one favors risk off assets, although it has dramatically improved, as we'll see next. If you take that score of 0.95, compare it to the last 5,000 trading days and take the Z score, comes in at minus 0.64. This is a time series of the last 90 days of that indicator. You can see that it peaked at a z-score of minus 2.5. <clears throat> this has been a 20% opportunity in the swing trade in XIV that we've been working hard in the chat room. London month rebalancing, no change to our holdings until one under about one March. You can see what we've been holding this month. The current leaders on these different uh, portfolio data sets, uh, no change in the ETF 13, 22, and 32. The Dow leaders are Disney, Merck, Caterpillar, and Bank of America. The ETF 200 are the 200 most liquid ETFs, and these are the top 10. And then the ETF Max looks at about 1,300, 1,400 ETFs. These are the top 10 holdings, dominated right now by uh, biotech and natural gas. <coughs> the ETF2 model is uh, theoretical exposures at 60%. The model portfolio remains at 100% exposed with some stops that get adjusted this week. Quick look at the ETF13 and 32 portfolios with London Monthly. You see about a little over two thirds are now back on buy positions. You can see the difference between the strength in technology, which has returned almost 10% over the last three months, and the downside of Latin America, which is down 8% over the same time. So there's real divergence in the sectors of the world. By the same token, the ETF 32, it's 9% in the tech, minus 12.5% in the Brazil. This is the uh, top 50 of the ETF max. <coughs> see the weakness now in uh, solar it's only up a, a percent over the last three months as it's cooled off considerably those symbols that are in green in the first column three month return and then white in the six month return are those that are moving to the top more rapidly they are earlier in their life cycle so uh, some potential growth still remaining for uh, coffee uh, coffee gold explorers Junior gold miners, silver miners, uh, more silver miners. So it looks like a trend developing. Looking at the market health check, the vertical blue lines are 10, 20, and 30 days of look back period. Horizontal purple lines are price targets that have been support before and resistance before. Uh, they're, they're price targets on the upside. We're getting close to that all time high up here in 185 after that nice recovery. <coughs> These lines in red, the horizontal lines in red are support levels which act as price targets on the way down. So I still have us in the yellow zone here where I, uh, I go in the direction of the daily market uh, move each day. Uh, the upside has been very effective here over the last uh, eight or nine days as the market has recovered from this flirting with disaster. 
The dark blue shaded area is the 30 period Bollinger Band plus or minus two. The lighter blue shaded area is the river is the floodplain, excuse me, plus or minus two. The river is plus or minus one on the 30 period Bollinger Band, excuse me. The medicine's taking effect. This uh, pink shaded area is the dragon. That's the 10 period Bollinger Band plus or minus 0.5 and it is the uh, front runner of changes in trend of the river. You notice that it came almost completely out of the river. That's very hard for that to occur mathematically. <coughs> when price reversed and we entered the dragon that re entered the river, we were alerted to a nice swing trade opportunity, which we've been enjoying this past week. There's three regression channels indicated here. Blue is the short term 10 period, steeply up. Uh, and then the regression channels formed by the maximum excursion during the look back period, which is uh, on this last day of catastrophic selling. Very steeply up, hard to get better than that. Hard to maintain that. But if it gets through 185, you can see another couple days bursting north as all these shorts cover their swing trades to the downside. The 30 period uh, regression channel lagged by one day <coughs> is in black. See that is uh, sloping downward. But this time series line here is the actual slope. You see that it's turned at an extreme point when it's 2.75. So this was a horrible down uh, 30 period here uh, lately. And it's now slowly improving. Uh, and it's made that key turn down here. This is the time series and slope of that 30, which works out well as a descriptor of the market's health at a given time. The long-term trend still remains up. That's the green regression channel in line. And we are just past the midpoint. So we have come all the way back to the long-term trend, the 90-day trend, and uh, are fair valued on that time frame. <coughs> so this would be a natural turning point here where uh, we're, we're pushing the upper boundaries of the 30, uh, we'll see if there's any legs left in this to get through 185. Uh, I certainly think that can happen. Uh, if it does, another 5 to 10 points on the upside. Once we get above 185, uh, I want to definitely have a long-term outlook by default. When we're in the yellow is when I like to go in the direction of the market move. Uh, downside targets if the market fails here and rejects this 185 level back to 181. 177, 174. The jaws of PPO, the percent price oscillator, open to the upside, still room to go. We've been overbought now for about six days. Can stay that way for a long time, as we've seen in this uh, earlier bullish move. Uh, bulls have just moved back in charge now, defeating the bears with this uh, rally of the last eight days. So we're poised to make a good run at 185 here. <coughs> ETF2 regional report, 6 out of 10 are on a buy signal, so we're at 60-40 in the allocation strategy of the market model. The S&P at 57 is still slightly better than the rest of the world at 54, although Europe at 58 is now better than the U.S. So it goes Europe, U.S., than the rest of the world, Asia. Inside the U.S., it's tech, small caps, large caps, mid caps. The two strongest sectors, U.S. tech, and now the European 350, two weakest Latin America and Japan. XLV has the strength in the U.S. sector, spiders, followed by uh, industrials, technology, and materials. World market model, all of the U.S. is above average, the NASDAQ especially so. In Asia, plus Japan, uh, you see it's China and Vietnam still remain strong. Canada and Mexico, slightly below average. Brazil suffering, along with Latin America, emerging markets in Japan. Everything Europe is above average. Germany and Spain continue to lead the way. It's a toss-up between the global business sectors, but healthcare is dominating globally. ETF top 30 from the ETF2 database. The ones that are in green and green for strength and consistency are the ones that have been the relative strength leaders for a while. Green and white in strength and consistency like the semiconductor fund. That's newly emerging strength. 
you can see this turnaround in the gold miners. It's green and red. You almost never see that. And then green and yellow for silver. And then uh, mortgage REITs at green and white. So these are the emerging strength. <clears throat> if we're looking for short-term momentum follow-through. This is the Dow through the same lens. Disney's now at the top. Caterpillar moving to the top. It had been down very near the bottom. It's marched its way steadily up. Losing strength in 3M and Boeing, which are white and then green. ETF liquidity, just for your reference. These look at uh, the average daily dollar volume traded over the last 30 days, plus the ATR percentage. Those in green are exceptionally volatile. White or above average in volatility, yellow or below average. Looking at the uh, daily report. Primarily looking at uh, pages two, three, four, and five. <clears throat> uh, emerging markets signaling on the short side for uh, the overreaction system. So if we see market failure here, looking at emerging markets and then probably Latin America would be the first place to look. Only a, uh, a couple uh, pattern trades, uh, triple screen for treasuries and then the auto framer fires for the VIX and treasuries. You can see just how vigorous that spike in volatility has been. As it returns back towards normal, that's been a good swing trade in XIV. That's reflected in the risk index as well. Key winners in <coughs> over the last 10 days among the Dow 30. Intel, 3M, Travelers, Visa, and uh, DuPont. The losers. Uh, Verizon, Cisco, Goldman Sachs, AT&T, and Microsoft. Uh, Verizon has signaled on the RSI 2. It's number one under max pain range compression. Disney has been exceptional. Look at the outperformance over every measured time period, looking backwards. Long-term strength in Merck and AXP has not followed through lately, so they may just be pausing to refresh. And that's a possibility for gains there. Looking at the Dow 30, also not many signals. Uh, only the VIX signaling a 2 on RSI 2. Uh, Latin America and Brazil, you can see just how bad they have been. And the resurgent strength in silver uh, on Saturday continues. Auto Framer, just a couple candidates, the VIX and Treasuries. VIX showing 10 to 1, Treasuries 5.5 to 1. Not surprising given the, given the move in the last 5 or 6 days. Alright, that's everything I want to cover for the <clears throat> weekend report. Thank you for bearing with me with my head cold. We'll see you in the chat room. Take good care. Keep your wrist measured and your powder dry.